one new board member, one board member that grew in that not the So I want to ask them to introduce or reintroduce themselves. Um, and we can also kind of go around and just say who we are since all the budget but not quite in the whole. Hi everyone, my name is Allison Marker. I am a rising senior at NCTA. I'm a student body president, and so I'm working to help bolster community engagement. Um, I was connected to this through, I have a, um, I was connected to this through Mayor Paul and she recommended that this would be a great way to do get involved with the community and I happen to agree. I think I'm sitting in the position of District B and new seats and new Valley residents. So check, check, check. Lots of representation there. Um, I'm studying natural resources and political science. Um, so really invested in it as well as sustainable sustainability our community. Since retiring, yeah. I know. That was sad to say it. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ron Pring. I work for Visit Raleigh. Um, I am the public relations and international tourism manager. Um, you know, been involved with the city for a long time. I did Raleigh Neighborhood College, the Academy. Um, and I believe I am the first time serving on the board of commission ever. And then everyone, except for Leon, you just want to go and introduce us. Uh, well, I only have you and Jeff's options, and both of y'all are and my brother who wanted to choose, so, you know. I'm Leon Hook, representing District B. Um, I can also answer, represent the retired folk, but anyway, and who've been here a long time, so um, whatever you want. Uh, Tom Simon, District C. Stacy, who uh, I don't really know what I was. I lived in District A. I think I was at the time a big moving Raleigh resident. I feel like I'm not going back. <laughs> uh, and I'm certainly the chair. Mm -hmm. Carmen Coffin. I am, I think I was the, the speed of. Uh, um, I'm Raleigh native and um, been here almost a good five years. Um, my name is Trishana Sanchez of uh, April and Cosmo Tree. I am an at large um, appointment and I serve as the board secretary. I'm Leo. I'm a minority business owner of the best junk removal company. Right. <laughs> 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 fourth year, we're going strong. Um, District B. E. And uh, I am Ulysses Lane. Uh, I live in District C. I'm going to be a senior representative on the board with this thing. And I'm also. Uh, Chair of the Southeast Citizen Environment. I've been here since the beginning. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Just a big one. I'm just not talking about it. Um Jeff on Gary Geekham, I got the jokes today. Uh, <laughs> Still a renter uh, and also serve as vice chair on the on the board. Okay. I should say this is a religious Oh, we will get to that uh, okay. later later on. Um, thank y'all and thank you again, um, Brown, for joining us. Uh, we try to have fun. We're pretty good at it. <laughs> um, you have an agenda. You should have seen already. We're going to try to stick that, stick to that as much as possible. Although we are missing right now, Karen from Saturday. She's here. Yeah. Okay. She's on the so We may get there just a minute to settle in, but shouldn't be any other changes. So I have a motion to approve the agenda as it is by Tom in a second, by Reno in the agenda. Next time. Um, all those in favor, please audibly say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposition? Beautiful. Um, we don't have the March and April minutes. What we're going to do at the retreat is review all of it. 
that'll be part of some of the committee work that we do and then some of the future work planning that we'll do during the retreat. So fast on the future to uh, this meeting. Um, I don't see any available for public comment. So we'll move on from that. And I also know or don't believe that Dr. Member Jones will be here. Okay, she will be here uh, to give us an update. I may put Dale on the spot to give us an update um, on uh, voting issues that have just been passed by City Council um, at the end of the meeting. So Dale, that's it. Okay. I'll try my best. Give us what you can. Okay. Um, Karen is. Looks like she's on the phone call right now. She's right outside the door. It's rough walking up those stairs. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and start with the committee updates. I know I'll do the. Sarah is not here. She's traveling in Morocco. Yes. Morocco. Um, so. She will not be doing her update, but it is short with policy committee, so I can I can offer that up. Um, I think I sent out the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, the majority of that was used to discuss. Yeah. A good portion of that was used to discuss um, some of the recommendations from the policy committee for uh, the social media rules of engagement document that outreach is helping with as well. Um, or outreach and creating okay. those rules of engagement live within a document that the policy committee created. So we kind of threw in what we could help reshape that and give Tom and the outreach committee uh, any recommendations on how they wanted to um, add some of that in. Uh, so that was part of the meeting. The other portion we talked briefly about uh, our public, public comment from our last meeting, which as you know, we've worked on this public comment tracker. So if someone comes and gives a public comment to the engagement board, we can respond during the meeting. Um, anyone is allowed to speak three minute time limit. We don't respond during the meeting, but the policy committee then takes all of the comments that we give in the meeting, goes back and discusses them, and we have different templates and kind of roadmaps to how to respond to that after the comment. So we have a tracker that was created that really Folks who came, what they said, what maybe their issue or comment was about, and then it routes through either something that the board can address or another part of the city that will, uh, will be better able to address that comment. So all that to say, we have one comment that um, we discussed very briefly as, as the committee. We didn't have enough time to really find a resolution to it, but the person that left the comment was notified that it's in progress right now. So it will go back to the policy committee uh, for the main meeting to discuss, for example, send them the resolution and then close that comment uh, as having been addressed. Um, I think that was the bulk of the meeting. I don't know if Dr. Lane, Permanent Medicine, anything. But nothing new, just some updates from policy. Uh, I'll stop there. Not for you to come um, But if you want to, yeah. Yeah. So this is Karen Gray. She was the customer experience manager yeah. for the city of Raleigh's payments spoke to us, I want to say February or March. I cannot remember exactly. Yeah, I think it's so March. March. Maybe. March. Yeah. Um, and we initially connected with her, and that's part of what I was just discussing with public comment tracker. Uh, and Nadia let us know that essentially Karen works with and then continuing to work with something similar with the city to address just general citizen resources. So we wanted to see how we might elevate what we're doing with the public comment tracker mm -hmm. committee, what uh, program they're using, how we might integrate, what that looks like. So um, Karen, she with us kind of a follow up on, on all that. Yes, I am, and I was just about to text my. My partner is trying to see if uh, she was going to make it or not, but she might come in as I'm talking. Okay. So, yes, thank you for having me. I wanted to come back. I wanted to give you guys an update of where we're at and then also ask for some help. Um, so since we last met, um, and I believe it was in March, we have started doing work internally with departments, understanding how departments are engaging with Customers and as well as doing uh, more 
broad uh, engagement type meetings. Um, and so where my focus is going to be is more on the daily transactional type of work. And there are some gaps that we're finding, um, but then there's also some really good solutions that we're finding. So we are still going, we're still proceeding with software implementation that we're hoping to be able to begin that work um, we were hoping to be able to begin in June, but we're doing some preliminary work, which is really what I want to focus on today. So the implementation uh, work will start probably in the August, September-ish time frame. It depends on contract routing and all that good stuff. Um, and that will look to replace the C-Click Fix solution that we are currently using, which is on the city's website. And it's the citizen portal to be able to log an issue. You have an abandoned vehicle, you um, you know, there's a tree down, there's an aggressive animal, that kind of thing. You can put that in the portal. So the ServiceNow solution we purchased will replace that. And what we're uh, trying to get to is a more intuitive system. Right now, you kind of have to know our terminology that we use for different things in order to be able to effectively log a request. And that can be really different because I, I'm a city employee and I don't all understand all the transportation uh, verbiage that they use. So I don't know how to tell you if it's a curb issue or a sidewalk issue or a right of way issue. Um, up until four years ago, I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't even know what a right of way was. Um, so I don't expect the average citizen to understand what a right of way is. So we're trying to figure out a way to be a little bit more intuitive in understanding what what we call natural language, which is how an average person would speak about something. Um, and so that's something that we're working on. The other piece of that is um, we've got some work going on to try to understand better when people do come in to the municipal building or to uh, the Dillon building, which is on Martin Street, to pay a parking ticket, for example, or you go into a parks facility. What does that experience look like? What are you going in there for? How can we help you if you don't want to come in? But if you do want to come in, how can we make sure that when you go in, you're getting the information that you want? So we have some work that's being done on just basically generating ideas. And then we want to be able to bring them out to the public to say, hey, what do you think about this? Does this meet your needs? With the system stuff, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, Nicole, who may should be joining us in just a few minutes, um, it works for a consulting firm that basically focuses on uh, customer experience as well as solutions. And so what their company does is they go into organizations, they work with a lot of municipalities, they go in and they say, what, how do you interact and what can we offer you in the way of improving the experience? So she's assisting me with um, gathering information from other municipalities as well as system information. Um, but one of the things that she and I have talked about that we would like to be able to bring, not just to this group, but to other groups, is some ideas of this is this is a potential solution. What do you think about this solution? Does this seem like it's easy to use? Is this something that you think would meet your needs? So that we can get input from the public. What we would ideally like to be able to do is have an average person go onto the website. And I say average, I consider myself an average person. Go onto that website and say, um, you know, my neighbor has 17 pit bulls in their yard and I think this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And it be able to log a request and it goes to the right person. And then that individual who logged it gets the information back and they know what's happening. They can sort of follow it along the way. Right now, that's not necessarily happening. And again, you have to know the language to be able to know how to, I can help. Hello, welcome. These doors are working. They do. <laughs> so, we, I, I, this is where the ask for assistance comes in. Um, I was hoping that we could come back and share with this group. I'm hoping maybe next month or the month after, and it can be a smaller 
portion of the group if you if that's easier what we're what we're looking at what the survey looks like um, because it will be a survey that will have um, sort of a, a visual that you can walk through um, have, have bring that to you guys have you go through it give us real-time feedback but also utilize any network system that you might have uh, participate in any meetings where you might be encountering people who live in Raleigh, people who work in Raleigh, so that we can get it out and get as much feedback as possible. What I don't want is to end up focusing on uh, using social media and the city's website and only getting tech savvy people say, yes, the solution is great. What I want is to be able to make sure we're hitting people who uh, may not have access to a computer who come in because really, uh, you know, that they want to engage a person. So we need all kinds of feedback. I don't want to just focus in one area or one type of person. Because um, we can put it on social media and get all kinds of great feedback that the solution is wonderful, but that, only, that, that doesn't tell us if, if everybody's going to be able to use it. So um, is that something that you all would be interested in? And you can say no. <laughs> um, and is it something that you feel like with however you want to do it, whether we bring it and then you say, yeah, we can help spread the word about that. Or if there's events that you know that we could even go and we could set it up and talk to people there, that's fine too. Um, we just really want to make sure we get as much input as possible because it's not just the system, it's also the personal experience of calling or talking to somebody in person, knowing that you can get to the municipal building and that when you get there, the right person's gonna be there and you don't have to go to three different buildings to get an answer. Yes. So when you get to say you talk in that rubric, because I, I know we're supposed to be taking that, right? That's right, you get, you get a break, right? July, do you get a break? No. No? no. Oh. Well, council gets a break. No. <laughs> there is no break. <laughs> okay. um, so I I would like this beginning of May, I believe that we should have something to bring to you at the latest, the beginning of June. So your next meeting, if that's possible. If not, I'm happy to meet with one of your subgroups and we can work on the schedule for that if that if the timing of that works better too. Do you have a specific timeline for getting that information back? Um, not necessarily. I know Nicole and her group would love to get it as fast as possible, but uh, I had to advise her today that we might have to work on city time. And that means that things slow down a little bit because you want to give people the appropriate amount of time to be able to give feedback. I don't want to give you something and say, I need everything done in a week because that's just not reasonable and it doesn't allow especially during the summer months when people are away, your kids are out of school, you've got 500 million other things happening. Um, it just, we want to give as much time as we can. So I'm thinking summer is also a time when there are festivals throughout yes. the city. So yes. June, there's Juneteenth stuff, then there's Fourth of July and other things in July, August. Um, and then by the beginning of September, there's also um, stuff around Labor Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm thinking this would not only be stuff that's Raleigh residents, mm -hmm. but maybe the people are coming yeah. into town. Yes. Yeah. So, we get a lot of people who don't live in Raleigh, but they actually come here a lot and they may need to understand how, where to go and how to transact business or. You know, we want people who are visiting Raleigh, if they see that there's a missing uh, cover on a sewer main or a meter lid, that they report that and they tell us. Um, and it's something where we want to make it easy enough that if you are out and you see a missing meter lid, which is a major trip hazard, people can get very hurt by that, that you can pull it up on your phone and quickly and easily take a picture, grab your location, and say, you know, this is what's going on. And if you want to follow that and make sure that you know what you're getting, you can do that. Put your email address in there and we'll email you updates. Um, 
there's other situations too that we've talked about where we want to make sure that businesses too, because that's a big part of what makes Raleigh, Raleigh, right? There's a lot of businesses that people who are not only frequenting the businesses, but business owners, they're going to see things a little bit differently than a resident does. Um, because they have just different viewpoints. So we want to make sure that we're capturing that feedback as well. Yes. So first, I want to be sure you want us to uh, review this draft survey. Mm -hmm. Then once we get input to the draft, draft survey, to assist in distribution of the survey. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and I would like to have your feedback too on the solutions, yeah. not just on the survey, but also on what we're showing you. Well, this this is part of this um, community engagement network that we've been talking about all this time. So you come with that kind of question, and this community engagement network is set up. It should be it answers all of those things that you yeah. for. Now, if it's not raised, then of course we're still working on it. Right. But there's a lot of grassroots organizations. And there's things that you mentioned that you want to do for people that are not in the social media. That um, during COVID, we found out there were groups that yeah. were not being able to be reached, and people have resolved a lot of those things, but we should have answers for. Right. And all that's kept out of relevant. So, all that's part of using this opportunity to see just how that works and be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that kind of question is exactly what we should be prepared and the staff should be prepared to assist you with. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And I appreciate that because I'll tell you. News spreads faster in neighborhoods that communicate with each other than like social media. And, um, you know, I see it time and again where if you get information to the right people, now whether they just want to talk to everybody or they just want everybody to be informed, um, they will make that message fly and it will go very rapidly. So, yes. Karen, what um, you mentioned that. Like this is going to replace one of the portals that's on the website now. What is it? Uh, so we are replacing C Click Fix with Service Now. What is it? Service Now. Service. That's the technology. That's the actual tool. Um, but we are going to probably call it something different because it's. We want you to just know that you can come and get support. We don't want you to necessarily be concerned what that tool is. But it, the tool itself is Service Now. And then you said uh, the survey will have pictures and things like that will assist. Will there be a chance to actually demo service now or will that have to come later? So that will come later. Um, and that piece, I'm working with Katie Dombrowski, I think, has been here before. Um, and so Katie has built a communications plan for me, which she's amazing. And so one of the pieces to that communication plan is bringing uh bringing the site to people to groups to say this is where we're at so far help us with the testing make sure does this make sense are we are we doing this right is this intuitive enough and so that those are different iterations of that in, implementation will be brought to the group so that'll probably be like later in the fall early winter time frame you were also mentioning the local level. There are a lot of people that are uh, participating next door, mm -hmm. which is probably gossip. Yeah. Basically, it's like, oh, bring your dog is now. So yeah. if I don't, so it does there is, provide some help. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Um, you're right. There's a lot of gossip, but there is a lot of good information on there, too. So that's a good, a good avenue. Um, so really for today, it was more just I, I haven't forgotten about y'all. I very much have you on my mind um, and we will probably want to come back frequently for thoughts and ideas, questions. Make sure that you are bringing things up to me that I'm, I might have a blind spot about or I'm not thinking. Um, I felt really encouraged because last week we met with um, the leadership in the city manager's office and said, okay, this is what our thought, our initial thoughts are, please poke holes in it. And there were some things that they came back with that I was like, ooh, yes, that's why we need more brains in the room. Um, but part of what we bring to you guys is gonna be some of that information too. What else did we miss? Um, 
I'm a huge fan of having a lot of eyes on things to make sure you're not missing. So, um, so that will be part of the feedback we want to get from you all as well. So testing to try to break. Yeah, basically. Um, and to make sure that the, when we say this is one of our goals, are we offering that goal up in a way that everybody understands what it means and everybody can visualize what the outcome is? Because if I tell you what a goal is and you don't really understand what it means or what the intended outcome is, there's no point in me having that goal. Um, and that's what Nicole was telling me earlier. I said, we need to make sure that these goals are really understandable easily. And she said, yeah, I mean, because there's no point in having them if you can't say it and everybody understand it. Um, so right now we've got, I believe, six goals that we've identified for the entire strategy. Um, and the strategy is the whole thing. It's the technology, it's the face-to-face, -face, it's calling in. Um, there's even little things too that are coming up that I was talking to the ECC director and he was explaining something to me and I said, well, that's my job. Let me help you with that because that would, it, that would make the experience when people call the non-emergency number, we could make that experience better for people you're calling and you don't have an emergency, but it's still something important, right? And so we wanna get that to somebody quickly. We want to make sure that we can help you and that we're giving you correct information. Um, and so when he realized, oh, you can help me with that? Okay, great. Like, let me tell you a few other things. Um, so that's what I'm trying to encourage staff to is as they think about what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it, what are the problems they see that cause confusion? Um, it's little things sometimes like verbiage on a website where we say, uh, if you go out and I think it's um, curbside pickup, if you type that in, I think it comes up with solid waste services phone number. That's what they call the pickup. It's curbside pickup, right? But what transportation cares about is curbside pickup is I'm pulling up to a restaurant to run in and get my food. <laughs> So people are calling, thinking they're getting solid waste or vice versa, and they're not getting the answer they need. And so it's little things like that that are so simple to fix, but yet nobody says it, so we don't know. Question, and you may have covered this. I did this the last time, so bear with me. Um, See so quick fix, right? So I actually use it. I know I just pulled up the app. You have 52,601 reports the entire time of this app's been alive. Yeah. Will you guys be able to get the contact information out of this app to tell those people where they can go next? So that is one of the things that we're looking at to try to figure out how we can communicate that. Because we don't want to annoy people with too many communications, but I, um, I started looking through and there are actually incidents that have been resolved, but it doesn't show resolved. And that person never got a communication back, but then they also never contacted us again. So I will absolutely take that back to IT um, to see if we can do some kind of exploit. I think that. given given the activity that it's had recently in, in this district, I mm -hmm. just over that way, um, there's been a massive uptick in activity on c fix. So um, ways to make sure you don't disenfranchise those folks or help yeah. you. If, if it just goes away, you yeah. have to learn about a new process to find a way to it, it will be a riot. Yeah, no, we don't want we don't want to do that. And that's one of the biggest fears and part of why it's taken us so long to this is Nicole. <laughs> um, so part of why it's taken us so long to get to the point where we even know what solution we're going to use um, is that we don't want to disrupt what is currently working. And so we're trying to be very thoughtful about how do we transition that? Because to your point, if people are comfortable with it, they're going to get really irritated. Uh, there's nothing worse internal to the city than implementing a new software because every city employee immediately is like no this is horrible um and we don't want to see that with the public so yeah i think that was excellent feedback um there's also some things that have been taken off of there like uh, for a while abandoned vehicle was taken off and then that recently got added back in um be because somebody thought well why is this on here this isn't that big of a deal but it was 
actually a really big deal. Um, there's a few other things that are, in my opinion, labeled incorrectly, and so people don't know, and so they pick other, but really what they wanted is there. They just don't know that it's there. Um, so that's where the natural language piece kind of comes in. Um, so, yeah. Do you provide um, a glossary or anything like that of terminology that's used in the city that people would be able to access if they want to that? See what, yeah. what it's like. I'm a, I, I work for an agency. I can't tell you how many client meetings I have where like, they talk to me like, I, you just gave me 13 black men that I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. So we actually give them glossaries of here's everything that we have just said so that yeah. you understand. That is a really great point, and that's some conversation we've been having as well, because even city staff don't always know yeah. the answer. So that's great. Um, we we have had some conversation about, you know, if I if I hear an acronym and I type it in, pull that up and get that information. Um, another thing, too, that's been coming up is I don't know who to call. Um, Nicole asked for a report, and it was... I was stunned, but not really, because the number one search for the last two years has been staff directory. And people don't know who to call. But when you look at the staff directory, it's not really comprehensive either. And years ago, there was a who to call list. and It was very comprehensive, but I think it just got really hard to keep up. Um, but ideally, like really, you shouldn't necessarily have to know what department somebody works in or what their name is. You should just be able to say, I need to talk to somebody in management about my trash not getting picked up five to, out of the last six weeks. And it should get you the right person. Yeah, it used to be very simple when I went to places and they had a customer service desk. Mm -hmm. Just tell them and they direct you to where you need to go. Yeah. That's what we're really talking about. Yeah. How do you so how do you do customer service there in this time and keep it simple? Yes. Because again, people that don't have access to the to the uh, social media and stuff like that. And so we always talk here about the non-traditional groups. So then we have to talk about um, you know, the uh, grassroots organizations mm -hmm. and churches and mm -hmm. other organizations like that. We did a survey, we did one survey on comments for the um, time at city council. And based on the feedback, the doctorate reached a large number of people the way we did it. So that was an example of an outreach when we started, at least we were able to find that input. Yeah. So I think, you know, this, this type of thing, what the committee decides on is, is really a good template for what we already talked about here. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Um, yeah, I, you know, we are I would also, if you all have, and I haven't had the chance to call you yet, so just keep this on your list of things. Um, <laughs> but what I've observed is that most people that come in person to the municipal building are people who generally either live close enough that they can walk or ride the bus. Yeah. But if you ride the bus, are you stopping close enough to be able to get to the building in a timely manner? Um, I know because we had an employee who used to work for us who um, had a disability that there's a lot of people who are disabled that choose to come and handle business in person as well because that's more convenient um, for them to be able to accurately manage the business. And so there are, to your point, those grassroots groups. How do I get to them to say, we need your feedback. This is valuable. We've definitely seen a decrease in the number of people that are going into the municipal building. Um, but I don't know that they're necessarily getting what they want elsewhere. I think they may have just stopped going in. So we need to make sure that we're capturing their feed, that feedback as well. So, I'm sorry, just to just so we know where we're going from here. You said, when you said you think you have something like a sample survey by between now and June, basically. Yeah, so Nicole, that's what we were just talking about. Um, timing wise, to be able to bring back to this group the survey to get feedback from them, um, and then also leverage any networks that they have. Do you feel like the beginning of June? would be a sufficient amount of time, or do you feel like sooner, keeping in mind you? We're already almost halfway yeah. through May, people, and we've got a holiday coming up too. So do you feel like the, because they would meet 
it's the second Wednesday of each month, right? So right. I'll interject and say that June is our annual retreat. So we'll okay. meet on the second Wednesday. Okay. Uh, it'll be June 22nd. So okay. it will be a different meeting. So okay. it does take longer for you to get kind of what you want to share with us. That's okay. We'll okay. Kind of discuss and that way committees can discuss between June and July. Okay. Well. But it's not a rush on our part because we won't have a regular meeting. Okay. We can only, as soon as we have a copy for the two weeks, that we can share that link and the and the concepts, vision with you guys to provide feedback, and then you guys can let us know how we just distribute it. Yeah, we could do that by email. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. And then if there's a smaller group that has questions, we could even hop on a call or get together quickly if that's helpful. Um, yeah, because if we could um, even come, if we could do that in advance and then come back on the June 22nd meeting and say, okay, you know, who are we missing? Where can we get to distribute this to? That would be good as well. Yeah, I think um, it would be great for this to live amongst the committees. Um, I know we have some particularly analytical minds that are great at yeah. work like this. Sometimes <laughs> mine is, sometimes mine isn't. Yeah. Um, but um, it would be great for them, especially with their focuses. So like equity has a very specific and, and expertise that they can bring to that. Outreach does the same thing. Policy does the same thing. Okay, especially. Great. So um, for them to be able to, to look at it in those smaller groups and then come back and discuss kind of Cross yeah. it off that way. I think it might be helpful too. Instead of all of us at one time throwing darts at you, that would be fine. Um, and again, those committees will all meet before the next meeting, so yeah. it may be an opportunity for them to discuss everything. And then, if we have some, um, we'll try to build in some time in the retreat agenda yeah. uh, so that you can come in and, and give us any other feedback. And if there are updates between them, that's fine. Okay. And anything you can send an email between now and June 22nd. Okay. okay, great. Okay, that's great. Um, I may also bring um, somebody else who's in, who's kind of helping me with that in-person piece just to see. I was thinking Christine Leos maybe could join, if nothing else, so she can hear feedback. Um, but then she may also have some ideas of some things that she wants to run by the group. Um, so, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That's okay. So two more things. Yeah. So my question: When when would you want all the feedback back from not just our oh. from our network? I, I think if we I think if we can push it out and say I know Nicole's probably like no those things are too far but I, I want to make sure we give sufficient time. So if we say we'll look at the beginning beginning to middle part of July, and we'll kind of pinpoint a date when we really want to see that all of that back um, so that we have that to give you. Because I think typically two weeks is generally sufficient to give, because if people are really interested, they're going to jump right on it. And for anybody who's thinking about it, they may need a week or so. Two weeks is typically Beyond that, you're not getting really anything of value. Um, so I think that would be good. And the other thing I want to know is what grade level is this going to be written in? So I believe in the yes. lowest common denominator. So we can run it through. We have a readability um, program that we can run it through. And we can basically, I feel like, please don't quote me, but I feel like we try to aim for Fifth and eighth are sticking out in my head, and I yeah. feel like it's fifth. Um, because I'll be honest, if, if my fifth grader can't understand it, I probably can't understand it, especially with, you know, the way technology is, not everybody keeps up at the same pace. So that's probably what we'll shoot for, I think. Um, yeah, that would be it. One other question, and this came up. Uh, Katie, who was at one of the mm -hmm. meetings last week, and someone asked a, a great question about um, city material being translated to other languages. Is that part of what 
this survey will be? I'd love, thank you for mentioning that because I they you literally had a presentation this morning about translation and making sure that information is available. Um, so we have a few people that I, I've used in the past who I trust to translate um, properly. So we can do that as well. Yeah, I think that's good feedback. Any other question? Yeah, this one has a big soul. I just want to see how this coordinated effort of the motion. Oh, this is one of these. Okay. It's also really, really important for y'all for us to get out to our thing. So we might want to give us a little bit more about that because you were right. What you want us to set out. Okay. And after you review that, then I'll, I'll just start promoting that to get people ready. To I think that's perfect. We will definitely get that to you sooner than later. So that's something that Katie's going to help Nicole and I with. Um, and we hit at it this morning. We have a meeting tomorrow morning. So I'll bring that back up to her and make sure that we um, get that to you as well. We're hoping it's intuitive enough to where all of you can kind of click, click through it, understand what we're putting together. So uh, hopefully feedback from everyone in the room, but then it's easy for you to distribute. It kind of stand on its own and yeah. kind of explain it. Yeah. Part. But if, if you've done it and you can say, hey, this is what they're doing, this is why, and I did it myself, and, you know, it should be pretty easy, that kind of thing. But the other part is, if it's not easy, we need to know that, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I'm really going to hurt our feelings. Our feelings will be hurt if you don't say anything, <laughs> and then we make all these changes, <laughs> and then it doesn't land well, so... I have a nonprofit that I work with, um, Southeast Raleigh Promise. I could share it with them because they actually work in the community. Um, they work right now, they're working in Apollo Heights, Long Acres, Strapper Park, Battery Heights, uh, with some of the legacy okay. residents. I think it'd be perfect. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. That would be wonderful. So Tom, Trey, and all these Sarah's proxies mm -hmm. plan to have that. If you can plan to have that on your committee, then goes for June, mm -hmm. May, right? Okay. Exactly for June. Before, but they all have. Yeah. Well, no, some happen in June too. But. Before the next, before the retreat. We'll yeah, that no. way. <laughs> <laughs> before the retreat, and, and then, that way, if we get the information before next month. Yeah. Just let us yes. know what. And um, do you? They're on the are the subcommittees on the website. They're not. They're not. Okay. It's it Dale or myself. Okay. Dale. Okay. okay. Send it yeah. It. Okay. And people can review it individually. Yeah. Well. And then just let me know if you want me to come to one of the meetings or whatever. That's yeah. fine too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I would openly for the from the average side. I think something would be good. Okay. Have come in and you can kind of yeah. So it's just a better way to have a conversation and talk about your ideas. And okay. Stuff. Yeah. If I can get that date from you, I will put it on. The Calendar and make sure that time is blocked. Okay. Are you okay with me sharing your email address with the rest of the Yes, 100%. And you can share it with anybody you want to. Okay. Um, I've always had, whether it's a good uh, good thing or not, give my email out. You can give my phone number out. It's totally okay. I can even share it. You know, I said that. It's funny. Years ago, uh, I said that at I remember it vividly at uh, the Tarboro CAC and it was a huge group because we were talking about when we rolled out our utility customer assistance program and I said here's my phone number and everybody's like why would you you're giving us your phone number I said yeah because I know you'll respect it and you're not going to use it unless you need it you know I got two calls mm -hmm. two calls mm -hmm. from that and that shows I mean when you are respectful and treat people like a human they're going to be respectful and use the information when they need it and that's that's what we need more people to understand we don't need to be afraid to give our information out we need to be afraid of what people aren't calling us about so thanks so much for coming back thanks for asking me yeah, thanks. yeah no I really appreciate it um and so I'll get with you on the stuff and we'll get something out to you guys real soon. Sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. And you'll probably see Nicole's shining face with me too again. So can we sit, can we sit on our spoon? Is that okay? We're just going to talk about you when you leave.
Stay in Facebook. I'm going to for a few minutes and then really talk about data. Okay, we'll move on with our mini updates. Um, Tom, you want to do that? Yes, so we two things that will not take long. Um, one is the update around Puerto um, so we had our economic just looking at this email now from yes, in the show you'll say some dumb stuff. Um, so when we got our outreach meeting, we, we talked more in depth about rollout in this process and everything else. Um, and it picked up to that we're still trying to get through the hurdle of uh, communicating this to other potential platforms so they can get this RFP process completed. Um, but after that, uh, Dale reached out and said, you know, we've got this thing called public input, and we should probably take a look to determine whether or not that could solve, be applicable to what we want to do without introducing an entirely new platform. I like that. I think if there's a way where it's already tied in together and across the board, and the city's already using it, there's less of an adoption curve, there's probably more of an opportunity for us to kind of actually get going. So we had on the Docket to get a calendar meeting set up to get a look at public input, see what it does, and then basically just walk it through its paces in the same way using the Quartico structure and kind of what they talked about, and seeing if that those same principles could be applicable inside of that. In which case, then we would just become part of that as well and not have a new standalone platform. So we're going to have that meeting. Um, I'm not going to be at the meeting in June, but we will have reports and stuff like that for you to see. So um, we'll, we'll have that all sent over. Um, but that's the up general update there. I think until we sit down and have that conversation, we can just chill and just let that kind of sit for a minute and then we'll go from there. So that's your update on Quark. Uh From the social media side, so our, what was it, policy team? Yeah. Policy team was kind enough to put together a nice little quick guide, uh, which we reviewed and found to be pretty accurate yeah. for what we needed. And then we have a social media guidelines document, which is a combo of what I presented in April, along with a little bit of the input from their, their side to kind of tie it together. So we have our guidelines now, we have our codes of conduct, and we have our process. So the process is, one, we create a Google Sheet for content. There will be, then you'll be able to, there'll be, this is what's scheduled, and this is what's going at. And then there's going to be a block that says requested. And anybody from the board can go in, put a request into there. We columned and formatted very easy. It'll say, you know, which platform. Well, it's going to be several times. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be that. Uh, I had it in my head. Uh, if that, then the messaging would be you have an image or need one. And do you have an approximate date of when you would want this to go down? And then we review it and get it scheduled and let you know. So you can just kind of let us know that that's up. Who's us, do you ask? Great question. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. So the review team would be the review team would be the chair of the board and then the chair of the average community. So there's two people that put eyes on these before anything gets set up to be published or posted. And then we would review that. And if we ask you feedback on how it's there, you're kind of um, same thing, publishers. There are only two people that can publish, a chair and a chair of the average community. That way we keep everything copacetic and very calm and collective in one spot. Um, a lot of this documentation, and I, I apologize, I meant to print out more, but um, I'm a little hot mess today. So, um, so uh, this covers though everything from engagement, confidentiality, uh, the details about if there's sources that are used for information inside of one of our posts that you cite that source. That's a very important part. Tagging. Um, that we would not tag individual people, you would only tag entities. So if it's City of Raleigh, if it's one of the you know, other departments inside the City of Raleigh, but not a tag at Dr. Ulysses Lane will be presenting this today for you kind of thing, so that we don't put spotlights on individuals, we just follow the rules of that. Um, and then we talked a little bit about, and I think we shared last time, about the inappropriate reader comments. Um, you know, we obviously know that Facebook and Instagram can be a little bit of the wild, wild west. Um, so we have some pretty detail-oriented, specific things of what to do as a board member, how to operate inside of that capacity. 
Um, but that won't happen. So I, I genuinely don't foresee that being an issue for quite some time. You have to grow an audience. There's a lot of stuff that has to happen before we get to that point where we're like, oh gosh, somebody said something that we do here. But we'll have that on that down. Um, so at this stage, we're pretty much ready to go and to create the platforms, get the tool in place that will help us secure and also monitor what's going on with when it's going out. And if there's any sort of activity that we can see, we'll come back to us so we can see that um, and move forward. And then the tag for the handle would be CEB Raleigh, which I believe is still available. I checked it the other day, so unless one of you guys decided to steal that from me, um, I think I can still use that. So that would be the that would be the um, that would be our main, that for both Facebook and CEB Raleigh. Um, so uh, we can share these documents afterwards, but again, they touch pretty much all the high points that you can touch. And again, the, what policy committee gave us uh, account management, content guidelines, and response to this protocol is exactly kind of where we want to be. So uh, I would like to put forward a motion to for to approve the creation of the accounts, the purchase of Boomi, so that we have the tool in place um, for for that. Uh, uh, Lumi, uh, Lumi, the uh, the tool that will broadcast out for us. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, sorry. And then um, and then my plan would be for the retreat to be able to provide everybody with. The spreadsheet or have the spreadsheet ready. Some content already loaded in. We have a couple of events that people have brought up and proposed that we can start seeding that in. And then the rest of it there for teams to review, maybe in the meeting, you guys are going to like sit and come up with some things that they need to go out over the next couple months and can populate that at that time. Um, so, that, so the motion is to approve the uh, creation of the accounts, purchase of Loonly, and to start the process of rolling out the social media. Uh, before we discuss that, requires a second. Dr. Lang was not really What's my job? That's it, man. I will point out or just refresh we did vote as five members to approve the purchase of the million in our last meeting with the caveat that it wouldn't be used until. This was done. Right. So, as we're amending the motion, you don't have to. You can take. Oh, okay. Cool. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Because we saw. Yeah, we had that. That's right. So yeah. That. Yep. We have that. So then, yes. Yeah, so the amended motion would be for the creation of the accounts and the rollout uh, as we get moving. Any other discussion? The only thing I just want to be sure we'll get copies. Yes. Oh, yeah. Approving this. Not yeah, and again, that was 100% on me. I should, I, I'm just going to get them around. I just, but yes, look at everything, it will look exactly like this with all the outlines. That's me. Yeah, that should be like my okay. piece of paper. I'm going to get you back so yes, 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 and there's a number. So look at you. You. Okay. Um, any other discussion before we vote? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> The motion on the floor is to approve the social media guidelines documents that Tom has put together and to create the Google spreadsheet where all of the social media will live. All, the, all those in favor, please audibly say aye. 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 Any opposition? Perfect. I'm I'll get I'll get in touch with you separately on email to just get the process of getting this. And what we need to do for the rules, like your know, registration standpoint, from then. Okay. okay. Another thing in the books. Um, thank you, Tom, for yeah. your work on that and the outreach committee has done a lot to make sure what we needed yeah. and we're covered on the basic. Yeah. Um, oh. um, equity. Yeah. 
update from Trish. Um, I can tell you one. Uh, so this will be short for us. Um, so we were not able um, to speak with. Uh, I'm gonna forget what's name. What's the name? Damn. Damn. Oh, Michael. Damn. Oh, Michael. Um, they had some business with the fitting, so they weren't able to make it to um our meetings. We had to ask some of those like questions that were really gonna get the ball rolling um with the next phase. So we just continue to um strategize and work through ways to do outreach to make sure that's as equitable as possible. Um, we have invited him to come back or we invite him to come back to our next meeting. So hopefully um, he's able to make that meeting and also maybe hopefully Asia will also be able to make that meeting because she will have some information that will also be able to help um, guide us forward as well. And I love this question, although she's not Permanently back, so don't email her because she's only part time right now. Uh, you should did answer a lot of this question. Uh, she was kind of part of spearheading this project as well. So we sort of missed her for a lot of reasons, but also because she has a lot of the information that we, uh, the answers to the questions we were asking. So she was able to give some quick responses to those that I think will help keep the ball rolling, even if Michael and Dan aren't able to attend the next meeting, but definitely want to hear from them. Um, Yes. And then uh, there really is no set timeline. So that timeline, so whatever the work is, can kind of be done as we're able, yeah. as the equity committee is able to. Uh, but it is helpful just to see some of the general, like who, what, what, where, how, why is the answer to that. And Taisha should be back full time. She told me yesterday, June 1st. Okay. So she, I'm assuming she'll be at the retreat. I would I don't see why she wouldn't. So and I just want to offer um this is I, I think this is like a an observation of just today kind of bringing pieces together uh and sort of thinking about our mission statement in relationship to sort of the radical inclusion component of what we're doing and recognizing that within this work, even though there's always the hazard of like when you collaborate with municipal structures or established institutions that you fall into and then and suddenly you're you're really sort of continuing their influence mm -hmm. which is antithetical to the idea of radical inclusion that we proposed what i just want to uplift in the work that that we're seeing and, and as it's forming and certainly what equity is doing is actually sitting at the juncture so this idea of the customer experience that free surveying everything and we also did it with um what was that other one for the engagement network, we, we did some pre pre survey and pre experiential piece. Mm -hmm. It's an important piece for us to recognize that our perspectives, as they are informed by our community, are being translated into those mechanisms. Um, and one of the things I heard from Karen's sharing was like the the reality that exists that is important to me is having an alternative rapid response mechanism that is not police enforcement. Um, and that idea of stepping beyond, um, you know, to, to click and see and fix it, like, I don't even know, that, I don't know, and that all of that is foreign to me. But having that portal then makes me recognize, like, oh, I have other options because I always resort to the non emergency line and I'm always afraid of the of requesting those services. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that I just want to uplift that piece of like, we are in the midst of transformative work, and sometimes it's not obvious, it's not clear. What we are working on in, in the equity policy, uh, equity uh, standing committee with this work is actually translating participatory budgeting into a structure that reinforces equity, creates guidelines, all of those kinds of things. So I'm getting really excited as we're sitting here to, um, you know, come to you all and share where we are and, and how we're going to kind of extend that work. Um, but there are a lot of pieces at play and a lot of um, ambiguous blind spots that we have because we're not getting the right people in the room. So we're also living the reality of what it is to to make a table and bring people to that table and, and try to figure that out. Um, so just wanting to offer that as a space of like, please take a moment to step back from the work that you're doing and reflect on its connection to the mission and use that as a self-check as we're going into the retreat to discern how you individually want to move forward, as well as how we want to collectively continue to move. Because we're moving. 
not everybody is always happy about where we're going. But, we're moving, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just just wanting to like take a moment to observe that, acknowledge it, give it words uh, so that we recognize, like, even as we take this out to our networks, we can talk about some of these things of like, these are my hopes in doing this activity and sharing this with you to get your feedback. This is what I hope to see. Because I think it can be really affirming for us to to like articulate that and then also inspiring for those folks that we are connecting with. And as a quick sort of piggyback on onto that, um, there's I think we started maybe started working on this with this board with the idea of a lot of the work that we do getting done in this meeting. A lot of it had to be in the beginning because we had to be on one accord about what we were going to be and what that was going to look like and how we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, the hope and what I see happening that I think is also really exciting is that this is for us to touch base and to connect with people that, that want to come here and see us in person. But you are all doing so much work in your committees, and I think that's the important, that's a really important piece of success that we're community engaging for. It's not just about us sitting in this room and and talking and dialogue it's what we take from there and then the effort that we go and put back into your committees to get down to the nitty-gritty of what we actually need and to put your brains to work in time that you offer so that you can come back with policies that are well thought out for us to be able to carry on into the future or being responsible for creating a process that's going to be allotting millions of dollars to people in the community and putting your mind to work and your expertise into that it's a really important part of of the work that we do. I love seeing all of you, but the community yeah. work is, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> the community work is really important. And, and I, that's part of what I hope to sort of shift us to during the retreat. Um, not again, not about all of us having to do everything together in this room. And that's the only time we have that's really empower and encourage what we do in your committees. And then move that forward because those sometimes those smaller shifts move faster than being the big one. And that's okay. Um, but as a as a general and a resounding thank you for the work of uh, spending an extra two hours, hour and a half of your week, of your month to do the committee work um, is really appreciated. And I, I do see us moving, and that's an important part um, to me as well, so actually. Um, in that vein, I don't have any old business because most of it is usually taken up in our committee updates, which is great. Um, or in staff update, uh, I'll move on to new business. So I, yes, did I just completely blank out on average? That was oh, which means Tom. Yeah, you did. Okay. Well, I did work. I have a note. So I know your policy. We did it before Karen, which was the update on the like you have you we will not be doing you you scroll on my notes. Yeah, and I'm like, um, you can hold the blank part. I'm like, I'm just switch these Out around. around. <laughs> it's such a great meeting. Um, so I did get a chance to come to all of the committee meetings in the past, whatever, between last meeting and this one, to discuss an idea that was really born out of something that Jeff. Um, mentioned after our last meeting which was um we discussed using portico using the software to kind of gather more information on a grander scale for how to engage with the community see what issues are important for arising in their neighborhoods bring that back to a concise place there was also an expression of yes we want to do that we fully support that and we would like to do something else especially something in the meantime which the process of you know finding all of the bids and those things have taken longer than we thought it would. Um, so one of the things that Jeff mentioned was, was creating opportunities and activities for us as a board to be able to do kind of in the meantime, but also without having to plan a big forum and having to plan big events and things like that, um, but still get to meet face-to-face -face with people in the community. So the idea was for each standing committee to create amongst themselves their own uh, engagement activity, and I won't tell anybody yours because I think it's a really good one, and I hope Paul, I hope uh, everybody uses it. Um, I've been using a Marvels idea in the same way, um, but for each committee to be able to attend a community event, 
And at that event, the committee's decided what our activity is going to be. So it could be having a bowl of marbles and five containers that say, which is what's the best part of your community? Be my neighbors or you know, it's safe or whatever the case, or what are the most concerning parts of your community? The trash book, the whatever. So just having people take their marbles and drop one in and give their opinion. So that's like a very low level, low stress way to engage someone in something that's not just a survey or just a form to fill out. It's meeting people face to face, maybe starts a conversation with them as well. It's also not a huge planning um, burden on our backs either. So the ask is for one of those events um, to, to do that at one event. Um, if we're within a time limit on it, that's more than a quarter, more than a year right now. We're starting with one event before <laughs> this 2024, and that's the, those are the guidelines at the moment. We can talk about them, we can revise them, um, but that was the idea. So the first question from that was, how we find the events, who's going to plan on what are we going to do? Enter Lance, uh, who you... Again, may have met, I think you were at maybe the first meeting with Karen. Yeah, so I was, I was going to reintroduce myself. I came to the meeting back in October or no, probably November yeah. when I started. Um, so I am Lance. Um, I work as the community relations analyst in the office of communication. Oh, that's fine. Um, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. I wanted to make sure. I communicated the idea with, with Dale, and Dale said that'd be great. By the way, we actually have a Sort of database or calendar of community events that's being built. So that's what Lance has worked on. So it will keep that first step and that um, sort of burden of trying to find an event, plan it out, having to do all of that um, legwork on it a little bit easier. So um, he was so gracious to come to share with us what he's been working on, how we might implement that at some of the events. Yeah, great awesome stuff. If you don't mind, you can take one, pass it down. Um, so for those of you that are kind of newer to the board, um, a couple of years ago, we allocated some part of funds to secure community engagement fan. Um, and the idea was to be kind of a mobile city hall to reach under recognized communities and bring those services to the community to build relationships, to, to build recognition, be out there to see us and not just, you know, at official formal events. And so Saisha tasked me when I started to build out a framework of what it would look like for the permanent van. So right now we have a cargo van, just standard cargo van, but we are expected to get our permanent van. Uh, the quote to me right now is October of 2024, probably rolling out visible to the public early 2025, depending on how long it takes for the wrap and stuff. And so this year we wanted to do kind of a pilot to you know, demonstrate what we can do with the permanent van when we get it and the importance of it, the value that it offers to our organization and community. Um, so the van's available to request externally and the van's available for departments to request it as well. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that our office was doing events to engage the community, to speak to people directly. And so there are kind of two goals for this summer. Um, and this comes right out of our kind of organization department mission, but it's to deliver information and resources directly to underserved communities, thereby reducing barriers to public participation and to promote face to face interactions with residents to foster relationships and increase trust. And so to do that, um, well, ongoing with that is the 2024 summer engagement tour um, that Katie and I have been working on. Katie is our communications person. And so the idea is that we go out into the community, I think it's 14 different dates and events um, with different partner organizations to build relationships for people to see us out in the community, for them to ask questions, for us to share about, you know, here's what this city of Depart or city of Raleigh department does. So that educational component, education resources, um, Raleigh's top issues, opportunities for local artists, small business resources, etc. Um, we'll also be offering services at these pop-ups. So ideally, our engagement network will launch July 1st. That's a separate conversation. But you know, if they wanted to apply, if they wanted to update their voter registration, that is something that we've gotten permission to help residents do, even though it goes through Wake County. We can help with uh, uh, help them with that this year. Um, registering for a class with Parks and Rec. And then, of course, the engagement relationship building. 
uh, just having these casual conversations, building relationships not only with the people that we're talking to in the community, but also these community organizations such as El Pueblo, um, El Centro, Stealing Conditions, Neat Wooden Voters with Cheryl. Um, and so Dale and I had talked, Stacy and I had talked, and we would love to have any of you out there. I've designated a couple events specifically where it could be all time to shine. Y'all come out. We don't have a partner organization listed. Um, you're also welcome to come out to every event. Um, we will put you at that table with us and have a ball. Um, I'm happy to speak more on it, try to get some context to the van there. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. I did also just want to briefly touch on the vote local component. So we do have the voter education campaign that we're doing for 2024. That's another separate project that Saisha has tasked me with. Um, but we are tying that into our summer engagement for, as well as some more engagement in the fall as we actually get closer to the elections. But we will be um, talking to people about how to vote, registering to vote, the importance of municipal elections. You know, every seat is up for grabs this year. Um, and so I want to touch on that as well. Any questions? Anything I left out? Do you know? Thanks. Yeah. So, is there any way to add anything to these? Yes. If, if a group wanted to um, have the CV van to show up at what we can do? Absolutely. So this is um, this is our second draft. We're actually revising it, and there will be another one coming out. Um, the only challenge is staff capacity, just because we are a smaller office. Um, that is something that Saisha and I have talked about, but if we can make it work, we'll definitely make it work. We can add to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. I got one question before I think about how many of the board members have been involved with uh, a community activity? Mm -hmm. No, uh, well, they have board capacity. Yeah. Oh, board capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, without, without a board capacity. So, because I think from my experience with someone with Dale, it depends on what you want to get out of it. We're talking about these projects to go out and shoot between the different committees. But um, I don't know if it's, if it's something that we make sure we want to get when we go. Yes, we bring it back. And how we're going to categorize. Just say if it's one or two things, then you do whatever you want after that. But at least you're going to capture something that brings back to the board to use, you know, based on our, um, our plan. So that's why I kind of asked because you know that that's kind of the thing when you go out. You know, we've been talking about yeah, say to get people to your table. Mm -hmm. I know when I go out to work at the table, you got to get people over to the table. Right. Okay, so people do various things like games and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, say so spin the wheel or whatever, give them something free, and then people line up for that. But once you get them at the table, you got them. Yeah. So at least you can get a few more things in before they leave, but they come with their bag and they just go to table to table and open up. Yeah. So anyway, I just want to mention as we go through some of this stuff, if, if that's of interest to us to, to get a takeaway, you know, just let me bring that. So I think that's a great point. Um, there are a couple of things that I'm trying to measure as far as our office. Um, it, it's really hard to benchmark because we haven't done this before. Um, in Durham, I, I spoke to them a few weeks ago and their usage of the van, their van has kind of tapered off because there is that community recognition now and they're kind of engaging more. Um, but I'm hoping that this year will be kind of a pilot year that we can then benchmark future years on. As far as what we're trying to get out, um, I've created an actual feedback survey, although surveys are surveys. Um, I'm hoping to get some positive qualitative feedback that shows you know, that they felt recognized, that they learned something, as well as some quantitative uh, numbers as far as you know the services that we actually provided and that they thought were useful um and so i think the big draw will be the voter registration side and vote local campaign i know that's going to be a hot topic this year um i've spoken about games we will have popsicles and ice cream so that's a fun draw for the kids um so we will have food but i definitely see where you're coming from and i will continue to think about how to draw support i don't i understand what you're coming from when you say the do you mean like what the community gets from us or like what we got from that event bring it back to TV? Yes. That, okay. I, that's the last one. Okay. Um, and I also wanted to know that when we discussed this, 
from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, we have these events, but it's definitely also possible if we know of our own events that are not listed, that those are also things that we can bring to our standing committee and offer as uh, an option for us to participate in uh, as well. Because like, the one I think we're doing is not on yeah, exactly. Well, I think to clarify, because I think when we had the conversation, there was sort of the thought that it was going to be an assemblage of activities as a gen like a general pool. This is where the van is going, correct? That's right. It is yeah. considered so it hinges on, on the van there. And we had we had conversation about other events that, that were going to be happening that were in the city of Raleigh that could give us a different intersection. The other piece that I that I'll uplift is that when Stacy talked about it. There, there was um, the indication that we would be seeking something uh, in going there. So, it, so the, I think there's a question for us as a board whether or not we want to be in direct collaboration and like be following to assist with OCE, or if as we think think toward our work plan, the idea of surfacing additional issues or challenges or more knowledge about the community and what their needs are. Maybe something we want to consider in that world. I don't know if we're think if if it will make everyone feel more comfortable to come up with sort of the same questions, right? Like there's that there's that strategy, or which in terms of the systematic analysis and, and like data and and that sort of thing, it's going to be more helpful if we do that for figuring things out. But if we're just looking for engagement and just wanting to connect with people. That's a different goal, mm -hmm. and that may affect how we structure our engagement, and maybe it, it you know, shapes a different way that it's not uniform questions mm -hmm. or what have you. So I think for me, that's where the question sits, and I'd love to hear discussion about that. And I'll think I was just going to add back to what I mentioned to Carmen. All of this is up to change. So if there's something I can do to make y'all lives easier or to bring visibility to y'all, definitely open to collaborating. In addition to that, kind of echoing the same thing, uh, this is not in a demeaning way to your work. This is this is the entry point. So there are things that will be easily accessible if you cannot think of or do not have access to another event, but you do want to do something. So it doesn't have to be something from this list. You're not restricted to that, but this is a uh, very easy entry to choosing an event. I'm also going to hold up that I'm holding my own desire, like this is separate. I it, it, There's there's the committee work, and then there's work that I'm now inspired to do looking at this. It's like, oh, I need to go talk to my leasing office. <laughs> and we've got, we have three complexes that are fairly close together, and the reality of having like a conjoined event to bring people in is something that is doable in my world now that I'm seeing this happening. So I think those, also, those inspirations also exist, but I wouldn't yeah. be functioning as a board member per se. But it's like, oh, because I have this information, let me go talk to my leasing folks and see what their interest is and then make a little tour. And then the second part of that, I think, is um, part of what I hope to discuss today so that when we have the retreat, kind of what your plan, whether it's the events or the activity or scope or dates, whatever that is what we can really talk about during the retreat. But to your point of uniformity versus um on question or data collection or what that's going to look like. So that's part of the discussion um, today, or if it's something that we need more time on to discuss during the meeting. Um, but what that looks like for each committee as they go out. Uh, we know that we'll have kind of the same information that we'll share about the community engagement board, but in general, what we want to collect, why we're talking to people, what we want to be able to bring back is some sort of usable uh, data to point to that we've collected as we wait for whatever our technology is um, We have plenty of time to discuss that today, or that again, that's something that in committee working retreat, retreat we can discuss, kind of up to how, or something that you can take back um, and offer suggestions for in committee and we finalize it after retreat. We have um, some new members and some old ones who don't remember. Can you explain what the purpose of the van is and what you do when you go to a function? 
Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, up until this point, the van has primarily been at tabling events where we have been gathering feedback on different like major projects, such as the alternative bond program. Uh, that's the biggest one since I've been here pretty much. Um, we didn't have a framework that existed. It was kind of a draft that I think Deborah, was, yeah, Deborah, Deborah had been working on. Um, but now we've kind of approved the framework that I've been working on. Um, and so it is those two goals that I kind of mentioned earlier, delivering information directly with resources. So those underserved communities, reducing barriers to public participation, um, and then promoting face-to-face -face interactions to foster relationships. And so again, trying to actually be out in the community, not just at like the big events, but small events. Um, you know, I was talking with another colleague of ours where we're thinking about doing something like an office hours where we just go out during the work day or sometime and, and just start out in the community. People see us, people begin to recognize us in their community and, you know, get comfortable to ask questions or vent about something. Um, and so that's kind of the idea behind it. So what I think we can do, this is also up for discussion, take everything that Lance has given us today, dates-wise, as we know through August. Um, you can also, again, bring your own events that you have kind of an idea of what you want to work with. We're scheduling between now and the second. second. Um, as kind of what Jeff pointed to, we will have to, it is a great guideline to use the work plan, whatever ideas are going forward. It can't discuss what the work plan for next year is going to be during the retreat specifically, even if it's just an amended version of our current one, that's okay. But use that as guidance for how, what we decide as a group during the retreat to use these activities um, and events, uh, what information to gather. And then again, during that community work at the retreat, we can discuss specific implementation, whether it's an activity or information you need to bring or something you need to purchase. Yeah. yeah. And like I said earlier, I'm planning for another round of engagement specifically for the boat local stuff in fall. So if mm -hmm. y'all want to come out with that too, I will share more info later. And then we'll have the expo as well, which I'll probably be back next month. To talk yeah. About. Okay. So. Yeah, well, when we talk about the work plan, I think there should be two parts. It's the goal and accomplishment that you would have to be presented to the city council. And then uh, the work plan for the next year. Mm -hmm. So, be boss, but that's kind of the process. What you're doing that is doing the chart. Quite a lot of the accomplishments for the work plan for this year, mm -hmm. and then revising the uh, work plan for the next year. Right. So, we'll have a general things that the board has done in this past year. Uh, part of the work plan and that report to Council was meant to be born out of things like the community conversation, which were what we initially planned to do ourselves, but now that's turned toward software that will help us do that. So that will be a different looking report because it will not have data from the community conversation. Um, and then how we, whether it's just again a revision of the current work plan so that it does include or reflect whatever system we're going to use, plus any other ways we think to engage, which could be used event. So I think the long answer is yes, it will include all of these things that go look a little bit different. And the reason I ask because I noticed when I listened to some of the city council someone did bring up that they wanted to see the CDB board work plan because they wanted to see the line of what we had planned. Mm -hmm. So even if they didn't remember, somebody remembered that you need to review the board work plan. And see what we're doing, whatever what we talk is now. So I think anything that changes is fine. You need customer the moment you justify the change. Yeah. You know, because we ran into stuff now and we we didn't know what we didn't know. Right. So now that's fine as long as that is done. And I think it'll be I think it will be a great reintroduction to the work that we're doing. We didn't really we had an idea when we created the first one. Now yeah. we have tactile things that we can point to and things that are in the work that you need to point to. So I think uh, so we even better show him when you can get it to uh, approve it again. So as a as a kickback, does that sound like a good plan so far? We'll take all of these ideas, we'll discuss kind of the direction of the work plan after the retreat. We'll use some of that to inform the data we're collecting at these activities that we'll do throughout the year. 
with the helpful glance and other community events. And from there, your committees during the retreat will do some work on how you want to implement your activity. When you pick a date for what you want to do, anything requests financially you need from that, and go with the money. It sounds what I'm hearing is that July 4th, as according to this calendar, will be then the first opportunity that we have to go on. Technically, yes. Okay. If you have another, is the darkness right thing for them? Thank you. It could be a filing. I need to it do some work. I mean, this is this is again a very I don't want to say low level because I don't want it to be yet, but it, it's meant to be a, a light lift for us to be able to go out one as as a committee, so you've got other board members with you, but also to work in the information. If at any other point you want to go anywhere that the van is, or you have an opportunity to represent uh, the community engagement board in general at an event. And do it, or if you want to work within your committee, you have something specific you want to get resources for, information for. If that's also viable for us. Yeah. Um, quick question. Um, with the events and the things that are not listed, mm -hmm. one thing that will not come from CE. Mm -hmm. um, one way if there needs to be like a discussion about the event that CEV is going to be referencing to that because I never want to be representing it in the event that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not to say that we have anyone on board that, but I see what you mean. Yes. So I'm not saying this is the existing little phone, but I think generally places that the van is requested to go for. Uh, OC staff is and the events that we've participated in the past. I feel like that's realistically true. And I feel like that's a good guideline for what events we go and represent ourselves. Mm -hmm. and OC if again. someone wants to report, like, um, if someone wants, like, you don't want to support, like, the debate part. Candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and things like that. Yeah, we're just a policy for a policy. Yeah, we can't do anything okay. that even looks political. Yeah, that's part of the reason. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to. Yeah. Some, sure. some community organizations ask for like a candidate guide, and we can't even do that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's something we need in our policy from our policy committee. Um, so if we get part of our that? orientation, what the Part of the orientation for CD boards or boards or whatever about the policy. Oh, I believe that is. In that I believe that is in the handbook. So, yeah. As I recall, in that orientation, mm -hmm. and yeah. in that book is a policy already, so it's need to be invented. Oh, but it's that reprinted for the Yes, yes. So I, I recall that. The, the, the other thing I want to mention is that in going with Dale is to see what standard information that you want to have available with the band about your staff and the CD board. Because we didn't have any, what was run off was run off from the uh, website. So I'll interject on Dale's that have something to ask you to talk about something that I oh. brief you on anyway. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> part of what you have, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Captain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, work the, that's what happens when you work for the city government. <laughs> but part of the outreach committee meeting. Uh, planning meeting was also having Katie from the Office of, Communi uh, from Office of Communication for the Raleigh come um, to discuss collateral pieces. So it was a discussion about um, what pieces we wanted. So it's not just a postcard, not just a business card, but something that has substantial information about the board, when we meet, where people can find us, now that we will have social media handles, and email address, all of that. Um, and so I was encouraged because she was like, if y'all get me the information, it's a quick turnaround to have it done. Mm -hmm. So that's already, that was a great discussion to be able to have someone who's going to do that work for us, not asking permission from someone to ask for someone else to do it. Uh, so um, I know Tom and Dale talked about collecting some of that information. We got to look at some of the pieces that we could use. Uh, I meant to bring um, the Holding, or one of those, but all of that to say, from what she told us, it can be done quickly. And if we are kind of betting on July ish being the first that we'll be able to officially do these events, then I don't see why we couldn't have something printed by then. We have the budget for it, 
Uh, we have assistance from design for any specific pieces that we need. And she literally showed us how we'd be dropped in, where we'd go. Mm -hmm. They'll give us a quote and we have all the information and we can get printed. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think that would be, and we have the option of doing more than one. What so about the QR? That we also have approval to do. Yes, yes. So yes. We, hey, we do. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. 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 They have their own, they have a platform that they use to generate those codes and they're perfectly happy with it. So we can utilize that as well. They would just, they would generate. So if they come out with the they want to go every skin with the QR code that's among the things picture of them, go to a website that's better. Yep. So we, I, I would say that on the agenda for June, the uh, outreach committee, I propose or putting on that agenda to, or to use that meeting as an opportunity to maybe think through or have a good group discussion about what content blocks would fit best. And we can have that symbol so that when the retreat happens, Later in the month, that might be an activity in time which not only you can get that finalized, but we can get that in their hands so we can make use of the budget for this year before the fiscal year turns. So we will work on that at the next committee meeting and we'll be ready for you guys to review. You can do with it you know, however you want during that meeting and then finalize it and have Dale help us get it around to them. But that that is my goal. Yeah. Too. I, I, I got a little ambitious at the last meeting and said, I think I can pull that together by next week. Um, that, was, that was a really cute idea. Um, but we will, we will do that next time. But it's something that we'll be able to send out prior to the retreat so that you can review it to build it and we will that for the retreat. We do not be green field team, but we want to verify with staff that y'all don't have any uh, in the fiscal year blackout because this would be coming. I mean, we would be finalizing on the 22nd. So then you would be seeing that yeah. come through your offices on the 24th. You don't have an angry finance person that doesn't want anything before or after. We don't need to have the finance person. So. <laughs> 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 I mean, great, but I will. I'll, I don't know about any blackouts. Um, I'm not the aware of any. Um, oh, we, we do have a fund. We use the city manager, the, someone from the city manager's department, but we don't have one in our office when I say that. But I don't know of any blackouts. It's something I could check on because it is coming right up against that date for the end of the fiscal year. But I will check on that to see if we need to move quicker. Just as a matter of contingency, right? Just getting out of bias there. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, even if it if it does push up against it. I mean, I mean, it still come out at twenty five. I mean, right. it can roll over to July one. We're just. Where whatever that lag time is. I think really if we could fun. use we could use funds from this year to rewrite right. a few days in the budget. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If we can't, it's not the end of the world. It was just kind of a nice thing to do because we obviously don't get to take the money with us. Mm -hmm. So the next year, so that's yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, we'll up on something that Jay mentioned uh, as far as representing the CDB. Are we limited or should we be limited in what organization you say that we represent the CDB? Um, like we, do, we do have a conflict of interest that we will sign and we'll resign, so that yep. I think that will alleviate some of that mm -hmm. worry or responsibility that we've already kind of established our responsibility to maintain. Um, but I don't think anywhere outside of like general conduct or like board membership or the conflict of interest, we don't have anything that justifies where, how to or not to represent the board. Um, I don't know if that's something that we feel like needs to be more directly established. I, again, I think the general rule of thumb is somewhere that OC is represented, mm -hmm. where the van is, or something that's been discussed with the board and board work, then that's where we. We'll add that designation as the CV member. Otherwise, we would know. We're not liable. We're not going to be subversive about this. <laughs> Let's make that clear. We almost seconded that. Yes, I'll second that. No, I agree with that. That's a, that is a good point because everybody involved with a lot of different things, yeah, whether it's professional or passion. Um, or uh, causes, organizations, and uh, 
I think as long as we adhere to what we agree to represent individually and as board members, then I trust all of that. Yes. Okay. I, I did. I don't even know you, but you're fine. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give myself. <laughs> um, any other questions for Lance? This was specifically for him to share information with us. I would love for you to come back to talk time. No, um, yeah, I was telling Dale since it wasn't on the agenda today. I would love to come back next month because our, our plan. Well, side trail too much, but our plan is for advertising to go live in June for the conference so that people can start signing up for tables. Um, and I want to make sure you all are informed on it. Um, um, if you're interested in going to any one of these organizations, do we notify anyone or just show up? <laughs> I was thinking that I was going to say that last <laughs> you can notify me. My uh, Stacy, you have my email. I will add it to you to make sure everybody gets it. Sure. Oh, one more person. Yeah. You want to get a name tag? Name tag. Name tag. Yeah. I like this. I like name tag. Y'all got a budget. We, we can order y'all yeah. staff, though. <laughs> some some lanyards or something. <laughs> I did get my name tag recently. It's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't make us think. It's a reasonable request. It's a reasonable request. I'll add it to the budget for you. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's not get dick with a dime. <laughs> Um, thank you again Lance, for that. Um, board retreat, I, just some general information. Again, June 22nd, I think most everyone, it looked like two exceptions, has said that they would be able to attend. Wonderful. We obviously have a lot to discuss. Um, we, if you were not on the board last year, um, it's a, it's a Saturday, so we're not meeting on Wednesday. June 22nd is a Saturday from 10 to 2. Uh, we'll discuss kind of some of the general things we do here, agendas, and committee information. Um, our work plan will be part of that discussion. Officer elections will be part of that, um, part of the retreat. Um, we also will, I don't know if we'll have to do it at this point or, or after, but there are four board members whose terms end technically at that point in the year. Um, one of them, uh, Amber, obviously is not. Uh, part of the board anymore. Uh, if your term ends in June, you will probably already have been. You should have, yeah, you should have been contacted by okay. Cassidy. Yeah, I've already been in, uh, in contact, and you have an option to sort of reapply or to be reappointed to that position. Um, but that does mean that we will potentially have some new members when we start mm -hmm. July, August, September, of the year. Um, let's see. Committee assignments also are slated to change at that point. So if you're thinking, I no longer want to serve on the equity committee, I would like to serve somewhere else, technically those committees reset, their membership reset at the retreat. Um, so if you're thinking, if you do think you feel like you'd be better served somewhere else, if you have not been on a committee, if you think that equity or outreach or policy seems like a place for you, be thinking where you like to serve there. Um, and chair appointments are technically supposed to be done at that same time as well. So if you are currently a chair and you don't want to be anymore, but I that, um, <laughs> then that would be a great time to discuss it. Um, You're stoked. <laughs> uh, no pressure. No pressure. Um, all of that to say, I think, again, last year was a lot of setting intentions, setting some framework. This year is a lot more working discussion. So... I'm ready to work with your committees. I'm ready to discuss the future of what we're doing based on what we've built in the past year or two years at this point. Uh, and hopefully we get all of that done in a matter of four hours. If you have any dietary restrictions, please also let me know because I get to decide what we eat that day. Uh, and I eat everything. So <laughs> that you cannot eat or prefer not to. Um, I'll send all of this in an email along with a draft of the agenda, the work to be done at the um, retreat. You probably will not get that for your three weeks because I'll be out of this country 
uh, starting tomorrow uh, until June, the beginning of June. So, but I'll I'll be working on some of this in the meantime. But all that say, look for this information. Please review it before we get to the retreat. Look for the info, but not for soon. Yes. But you know, it's some you know, proxy. Um, and if there's anything that we need or I forget or we need to address in the meantime, please feel free to shoot it my way. Um, and we can we can get it done. And did we get it clear by legal that food choice or changing or sharing restrictions is not considered board business? Um, okay. Any questions about the retreat? Again, I'll try to outline everything a little bit better um beforehand. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Dale. This is not supposed to be that. Um, yeah. We have a visitor to the next. I'm so sorry. I thought you were just sitting on the reading. Um, were you were you just feeling to listen in or have public comments to share with us? Um, um, a little bit of both. Okay. Um, my name, my supervisor, really name. Let me ask you to be that mind. Well, that's okay. Oh. So we can all see. So we can all see. So that's okay. Um, and I don't know if I said this in the beginning. Our public comment, uh, general guidelines. We have three minutes. I will gladly keep time for you. Um, if there's anything specific, an issue or concern that you want to discuss, you want us to discuss as a board and give feedback on, we don't do that during the meeting, uh, but we do have a committee that reviews all of that. We bring pertinent information back to the board, and then we will still be in contact with you. So you'll get an email that thank you for coming. Um, here's where we are in that process um, and try to have closed the loop as we can. Okay. okay. So this is a good place to stand. That's perfectly awesome. awesome. Good evening, everyone. It's another amazing day in paradise. My superhero name is Mama Kai because I am the mom and student of a young black male superhero and the name that God gave him is Wisdom. Y'all have the opportunity to meet him. He's going a little cracker right there, but that's okay. Um, I came because I'm actually participating in Raleigh Neighborhood College. And so one of our requirements is to go to a board meeting and, re and report. And so that's why I came here. Um, I have had experiences with the um, with the Office of Community Engagement, and um, I figured that since while while I was here, that I would speak to the last experience that I had. Um, it was, I, and I've had conversations with Lance. He's amazing. Um, I, one of the things is um, that I was challenged by was we just they they recently hosted a meeting about um, voting, and this has nothing to actually do with what the office did. It actually has to do with what people in the audience did, what our community members did, um, where there was an issue with the with the volume of people not being able to hear the pe people who were making comments in the audience. And we had a couple of people and community members who felt that they needed to verbally chastise um, Taisha for not acquiescing to their demands. And so... Um, at the end of the meeting, I very politely just wanted to acknowledge that how Taisha handled it with such grace, but that if it had been different demographics, that their situation probably would have been handled differently. And so I just want to figure out how to make um, events where community engagement is at safe um, when they're working in a capacity where they're not representing city council, but they are representing city council. You know what I mean? And so um, maybe if there is, um, you know, just rules of decorum like they do for public comment, not that everybody follows them, but, <laughs> you know, but to at least have that and, and to make it a safe place. Because I it was Taisha's first night back from her maternity leave and things of that nature. And so it really wasn't fair for her to be attacked like that in any way. Um, it doesn't matter who it was, that shouldn't have happened. And so um, just some way to... Uh, to let people know before they come in that they need to check the privilege at the door. Mm -hmm. So that was it. So thank y'all for the work you're doing. I appreciate being able to listen in. And um, with that, I'm complete. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And please, if you don't mind, uh, if you're comfortable sharing, that's close to that. 
Uh, if you don't mind sharing your information, there should be a sign in sheet right in front of Lance. Uh, and that way we can follow up with you via email. Um, again, just to thank you for coming and then uh, we're able to do any work on what you mentioned. We can kind of keep you in the loop and follow up and yeah. let me know where we go from there. So y'all look tiny shit on. Uh, <laughs> Anybody watch? Thank you for ranking black beans. I appreciate you. Thank 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 you. Um, and then if you don't have any that specifically you want to share, just a general update from the end about that meeting on voter um, voting in general and any updates that we just can know for ourselves and share as many as you want the yeah. um couple of updates. So uh the engagement network will launch June first, July first. So uh, July first that will launch um as of right now, for what I've been, for what we're still being told, CACs are not a part of it. They're still, city managers are still trying to work out on how to add them to it. I, I don't I have no idea how that will work, but city managers offices handling that. So um, that, there's that. Um, also, uh, Tom touched on it. So we do use public comment. We we use public comment for uh, voicemail. So if people, people want to call in, so we use uh, software public input. I'm sorry, public input for voicemail public comment. Mm -hmm. um, every board and commission uses it. City council uses it. Um, I met met with Graham and his team at public input a few months ago. Uh, that's um, so I started brainstorming. I was like, maybe public input has a tool that we could use. Um, that does the same thing as Cortico. So I reached out to them, um, trying to get a meeting with them. Um, all I need is uh, the outreach committee. All I need is your availability because they said they will make they will make it work. They just need your availability so they can meet with you all, show you how the software works, and then we can bring it to the full board in uh, June at the retreat. So let me know. Would it be possible potentially to do what we did with um, <clears throat> with the Durham folks? Uh, for the June outreach committee meeting and have them give a 20 year yeah. minute presentation yeah. with again, something like that because you got everybody in the room at that point. That, yeah. And we can spin right off of that meeting, jot down whatever ideas or thoughts we had from it, and that can be available for the meeting of the retreat in June. This was perfect. Yes. We yeah. can do that. So yeah. I would, I would, let's just do that because I okay. think it might be easier. Yeah. Okay. We'll just, I'll make the note agenda that okay. there's a chunk of that. We'll just, there'll be two people agenda. One is that, and yeah. two the postcard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. So, I mean, that could be a perfect solution. We're already under contract with them. We already use them. It's just another tool that is available through the app that we could possibly use. Um, election information. So, and Lance, can you help me a little bit here? I got it. Uh, <laughs> I helped Taisha plan some of it. Yes. Um, so we went to Chavis on May 1st and spoke to the community and we heard a couple of different things that we ended up sharing with council. So the residents were split on both resolutions. Um, ranked choice voting was the most popular, though not um, something we're able to do. It sounds like voters should decide on the referendums was another big thing. Um, they had concerns about at-large elections, um, although the room was kind of split half and half. Yeah, and then they thought that new districts should be added and reviewed via independent commission. And so city council um, heard that report yesterday. And um, after talking about it a little bit, they decided to table um, resolution, I guess, 565, which was the addition of three district council members, um, but did um, vote and pass resolution this one also says 565, it must be an error on this. Um, but the other resolution, which was to adopt four year staggered terms with the mayor an at large seat and two district seats in one group, and then an at large and three district seats in the other group. 
Um, and then as well, because this is all together in this resolution, moving from the nonpartisan, um, I guess, plurality to a nonpartisan primary. And this would start in 2026, so not influenced by the current um, elections. And so it's kind of where we're at. Pretty much. I've heard Jamie talk about it a lot, so I'll try and answer questions. <laughs> yeah. I actually just want, I want to go back to that piece of the city manager not figuring out CACs uh, as part of the engage net, in, engagement network. When we first talked about mm -hmm. that network, I had an understanding walking away that they they were in that. Like there, there was no question about them being uh like automatically considered in that space because because the the pieces of the engagement network that are offered to organizations that are within it were part of the things that they were seeking at that time is very disconcerting and a little upsetting to hear that our city manager after months and months and us working with this for over a year um is still trying is dithering uh about seven eight weeks out from that and i can't imagine what that's doing you know and I, I just think it's important to recognize that that we did, you know, we we went through what we went through, we experienced what we experienced, and I had an understanding that the engagement network was going to cover them, and that it is not seems a little bit odd considering that. Yeah, I mean, from what I understood too, part of that that might not have been the case. They the motion to create the, to reinstate CACs in the way that I think Council this Councilmember Jones right, mentioned. So I think that offset what that looks like within the network. So I think save that motion, it would have been included, but now there's nuances. And I couldn't speak more, John. I don't know yet. And I, I mean, think there are nuances now that that motion was created with specific guidelines that are having to be reconsidered mm -hmm. and what it looks like for them to be included because they have specifics that they asked for. And that mm -hmm. motion, that's that's all. So they're asking to be an exception, is what I'm hearing them. Well, Absolutely. whenever she made that motion for them to be reinstated, I think that triggered it, something. It did. That Absolutely. Yeah. The uniformity of everything else in the network. So then there are nuances to Equity. what that motion asked Equity. for. Equity. Yeah, they, okay. Did y'all see the presentation that was made in city council about the CACs? I don't know. Okay. First, you have to see that. That presentation that staff made it discussed all of the options that they want to try to go but they had an internal group that looked at this and presented uh the rcac and myself are working with city council and this group for an external group to discuss this so that things like this to give the facts out on what changes are coming so that you don't have to make it up because i already knew in the beginning what some of the expectations are and what actually this board was about. But there always was confusion that this board and the CACs were the same. And so understanding that this is a network that we're looking at and not a specific group, that is finally starting to probably understand that and work them through. But because of the way things go, just working through and these things just don't want to take over time. But what you perceived and some of what you perceived is just the way things work through. And to find the right place because our, our goal is the same. We're doing what we need to do in the city's goal. CAC goals. Yeah. To get in this. And, and, and my thing is not that it's not it, this is not against CACs. Yes, this is not. this is my moment. And then, like this is right. the moment of it was not clear that there were policy issues in terms of getting in them. And there were part of the personal decision that I made. The step away from from pushing CACs was that they were already grandfathered into the the engagement network, which would give them access to the things that we had heard about in public comment by that point in time. And now it looks like the ground has shifted underneath me. And I just wanted to put it on record in case anybody watching in the owl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, yeah, I don't, I don't have any animus towards CACs. I want to make sure that we're engaging as many people as possible. And that's the impression that I have. I think that's why my mind has always been when I said this the last week too directly to Councilman Jones was you guys have to make these decisions to say it. This is we are two different things. And we've gone through 11 months of public comments and stuff, and that's fine. But we, mm -hmm. we have no thing to do here. Yeah. And so I'm hoping as we operate in this option, we're operating 
in that capacity too. Yeah. Right. My assumption earlier about the comment about the community the board plan is likely going to be tied back to that same exact group. Okay. So yeah, of course. So and I and I love that board, but um, I think it needs to stay with the city manager. And to be quite honest, it should stay with Jones. Like she wanted to bring it back. Let her. It, let they need to. This was a very weird radical shit. Has lots of politics involved, but right. and lots of other stuff involved. She's gonna run again. She was house. So this needs to stay there. And then, that's, that's been, uh, yeah. My concern is the engagement network and the piece of yeah. like why I stepped away from pushing. Yeah. Making sure that they're included in the being able to yeah. resources yeah. that they have. Yeah. And I, I agree. I just think that before, up until the point that that motion was made to reinstate them, I see we were they would have been. But I feel like that created so, yeah. 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 a lot of pieces. Yeah. With the personnel. With the budget, yeah, with the authority and everything, they're coming back. It's different from when I cut you off. Right. Now you're coming back, I gotta reevaluate all of that. That's what you get. Transparency. That's what you get, Eric. That's what you that's what you get, All so, right. Isn't that We're, also what, what umbrella they're gonna be under? We're at 6 30. I'm gonna ask Dale if you have any other updates to share with us. Was in the bottle there? Okay. I will come on to officially adjourn us at 6 30. You want to share on top of the phone? No, we understand that we adjourn. Look at that. We've got a second. Second by everyone. If it was a favor, say bye. Bye. All right, well, thank you all so much.